Um, I'm going to ask, we could continue chapel in the spirit of expectancy. Um, just continue expecting for the move and the outpouring of the spirit of God. Amen. Um, I think it's incredibly fitting who our chapel speaker is today. Uh, Reverend Jonathan Brown, he came, he's coming to us all the way from Savannah, Georgia, where he served as a U.S. missionary for almost 30 years in the urban city of Savannah, Georgia. That's what he actually graduated from Valley Forge, so he's an alum. Um, our theme this semester is his mission. And I think what we've experienced in the past few days is similar. It calls to mind pictures of what happened in the book of Acts. Um, I don't know if you guys are sensing or picturing the same thing, but how many know in the book of Acts what happened is a mission of a movement outward for the spreading and proclamation of the gospel. And this is what Pastor Brown's dedicated his life to. Um, we're really honored and glad that he's here with us today. It's such a special time at Valley Forge as this is. So would you please join me in welcoming Pastor Jonathan Brown. Good morning, UVF. I tell you, the presence of the Lord is in this place. I'm just sense and feeling is exciting to see what God is doing. People have been praying all over this United States for this day that God would move and that He would speak to hearts and lives. Because it was in the chapel service that God just changed my direction of ministry from pastoral ministry. He called me into urban ministry and spent time in New Jersey and Camden, New Jersey for four months and 23 months in Miami, Florida. And this coming um, August, my wife and I will celebrate 27 years in the inner city of Savannah, Georgia. We just so appreciate how God is working and moving in hearts and of lives and, and just thank the spiritual formation committee, President Kim and the administration and staff for the opportunity to be able to be with you today. But I want us to keep in this attitude of praise and worship and a sense of expectancy in our hearts and our lives even as we go into the word. I want you to turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9. We're going to read verses 35 to 38. Matthew, chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. I'm entitled this message, Being Moved with Compassion. The students, it's one thing to prepare for ministry, whatever vocation or whatever ministry that God is speaking to your heart and your life about. But it's a calling, remember that. It's a calling placed by God in your heart and your life. That he wants to use you in a special way the callings and the giftings that he's placed in your heart and your life. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes... He was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Father, we love and we thank you for your word. And I thank you for every individual here, every student, every staff, every administrator. Lord, for every person that is here, oh God, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak in the hearts and the lives, and Lord, that you would continue to have your way. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. It's one thing to do ministry, but realize you cannot do anything in your own strength. You can't do anything in your own power, but it's through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks the yokes of oppression, that sets the captives free. It's not I, but it's Christ that lives within me, the hope of glory. And maybe you say, well, I felt a call, and maybe you've been going through your schooling, and maybe there's times that you've questioned your call and, and, and wondered, God, am I really called to do this? Are you, is it truly you speaking, or is it just maybe a bad dream that I had, or maybe something I ate? But it's important that you pray and say, God, stir up the gifts within me. Stir up the gifts and callings upon my heart and my life. That we would pray, God, stir it up. Move me with compassion once again. Because I'll tell you, over these years, it has not been easy. These 27 years, and I, I remember even sitting at our kitchen table with our youngest daughter at the time was even younger. Rebecca was, you know, maybe a, a teenager, and my wife, and I said, you know, I'm just so discouraged, I don't know what to do. I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to throw in the towel. My youngest said, Dad, do what God's called you to do. Rebecca looked at me and she said, Dad, do what God has called you to do. My wife looked at me and she said, Honey, do what God has called you to do. I tell you, it's important to remain faithful. But also relying upon the power of the Holy Spirit that he would stir up the giftings and callings that he's placed in your heart and your life. You may be an education major, or maybe it's a business major, or you know, a worship leader, or, or a pastoral studies, or missions, whether it be o overseas or here in the States. Whatever God has called you to do, be obedient to what he has called and placed in your heart and your life. Don't wait for graduation. Stir up those gifts now. I know when we were here, we were required, and I don't know if it's still a requirement, but we were required to go and do ministry and, and to get credits, you know, showing that we did ministry. But I want to encourage you, whatever home church that you are part of, whether it's a place that you're at now or, or even, you know, here at school, you have a home church. I want to encourage you to come alongside of that pastor and say, Pastor, what can I do to help serve you? I want to help use the giftings and the callings that God has placed in my heart and my life. Don't wait until you walk across the graduation line. Stir up those gifts now. Use those giftings now. You say, God, here am I. I want to be used of you to come alongside. And I want you to know something. You may be an education major. God wants to use you in those public schools. God wants to use you in those charter schools. God wants to use you in the private schools. Wherever God has placed you, wherever he has called you, be obedient to what he's called you to do. Don't allow discouragement, disappointments, or even defeats. To stand in the way because there will be days of discouragement. There even will be days of disappointments. Or even days that you feel so downtrodden and defeated. But rely upon the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, move me with compassion once again. Lord, you have spoken to my heart. And I want you to know something. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to my heart even as I've been preparing for this message. It's not just for you. It's not just for the administration and staff. It's not just for the students. But the Holy Spirit has even been speaking to my heart and my life to stir up the gifts that is within us. That we wouldn't allow discouragement to stand in our way. That we wouldn't allow disappointments. There will be discouraging days. There will be days that you face disappointments or even defeats. But allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you in a powerful way, reminding you of the calling that he placed in your heart and your life. Because I can remember back around where the sound booth is, there was a chair back then, and I knelt 
at the at that chair and the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and my life and shared about the Apostle Paul's creed and said, you know, I want you to sacrifice and to give everything up for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I remember I wrestled and I fought with that calling because I wanted the comfort zone. But the Holy Spirit kept ministering to my heart and my life. We kept speaking and kept stirring the giftings through, you know, inner city ministry. And God has been using us in a powerful way. But also it's important with stirring the gifts, we, it's important that we be filled with the Holy Spirit and with power. Allowing him to fill us to overflowing. Maybe you're dry this morning and, and you're thirsty and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. He desires to fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you just need a renewal in your spirit. You just need a refreshing in your spirit. Allow him to stir those gifts and allow him to refill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. But also it's important we can do nothing without prayer. Seven days without prayer makes one week. I'm not talking W-E-E-K. I'm talking W-E-A-K. It's important to have a daily prayer life with Christ because we cannot do anything in our own strength. But also we need his word to help penetrate in our hearts and our lives and to get into his word, allowing him to speak into our hearts and our lives to change us from glory to glory. But also it's important, be open for the Lord to interrupt and to bring clarity to your calling. You might have come in undecided, not knowing God, what is your plan? What is your purpose? Or maybe you did come in on a particular you know, degree and, and you're studying for that, but the Holy Spirit interrupts those plans and speaks to your heart and your life and said, I'm calling you to set you apart for my service. Be open. Be open to what God has for your heart and your life. So I ask you, what is compassion? The definition of compassion is sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings and misfortunes of others. There are people all around us that are hurting, that are confused, maybe on our job places, maybe wherever we may be, that there are people that are hurting, there are people that are searching, there are people that are crying out. And the Lord wants to use us to be used of him, to minister unto those around us, be sensitive to those opportunities. Even this morning I was needing to print out my message and so I sent it, emailed it to the front desk and as I went to the front desk, the hostess behind the desk opened up the email. And she said, oh, it's, it's Lent day. Are you speaking for a Lent service? I said, no, I'm speaking for a chapel service. You never know when God is opening up opportunities of opportunities for us to avail ourselves to be used of him. That we would be used of him. How we moved with compassion. What moves us? Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to his drawing. If he tells you to speak to someone, don't say, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week, I'll do it another time. But when he prompts it in your heart and your life, be sensitive and obedient to what he's called you to do. That we would be moved with compassion. Because third, the harvest is plentiful. Be willing to go where the Lord sends you. Jesus admonishes all believers to always remember that the lost have invaluable and everlasting souls. I want to say that again. Jesus admonishes all believers 
to always remember that the lost have an invaluable, everlasting soul. Where are people going to spend eternity? Young people, adults, staff and administration, I want to challenge us. Be sensitive to what God would have you to do. If he wants you to share his love and the witness to somebody, don't put it off and say, well, I'll leave it to somebody else or I'll give somebody else an opportunity. When he speaks to your heart and your life, be obedient to what he's calling you to do. Because he desires that none should perish, but all would come to repentance. And it's important that we present this gospel to a lost and dying world, to those that need to know him in a special way. But also Matthew 9, 37 and 38 expresses on expresses on of God's spiritual principles. Before he acts, he usually calls his people to prayer. And you heard me say it earlier, you can do nothing without prayer. Don't try and go into ministry doing it because it's a position or it's a responsibility. Take it serious. Bathe it in prayer. Be diligent in prayer, seeking the face of God, knowing his will for your heart and your life. Because he calls his people to prayer. Only after his people have prayed does God accomplish his work. He wants to use, he wants to work in us and through us. He wants to use us in a special way as we say, Lord, here am I, send me. Send me to that individual. Send me to that broken heart. Send me to that individual. Lord, I want to be used of you. Is that your prayer this morning, that God would use you in a powerful way? Because I want you to know some God is desiring more world changers that will change this world for Jesus Christ. He's desiring to use you in a special way to change this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter what degree that you're taking, he desires to use you in a special way. As we avail ourselves, as we say, Lord, here am I. Send me. It is clear in the context that the kind of workers Jesus desires in his kingdom are those who teach and preach the kingdom of God. Teach and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Don't take his word lightly, but rightly divide the word of truth. Speak in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, saying, Lord, it's not I that lives, but it's you working in me and through me. Teach and preach the gospel of the kingdom. But also, don't be afraid to lay hands upon the sick and see them whole. He desires to use you in a special way to pray for the sick and to see them recover. Don't be afraid of it. Third, don't be afraid to drive out evil spirits because they will arise. In one of our first locations as we were in the inner city, I was sitting in my office and received a phone call. It was from an individual that was attending one of our college campuses in Savannah. And they said, my ceiling's house are moving. There was evil spirits going on in that room. They said, we've called the priest and nobody will come. And the priest won't even come. The rabbi won't even come. I said, I'll go and pray over that room. But you know what? I didn't go in my own strength. I went in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I went in and I just began to anoint that room with oil and just began to pray over that room. And she came back and testified of the goodness of God and how those, you know, she had a restful night of sleep 
Those ceiling tiles stop moving. And I want you to know something. Don't be afraid of the enemy. Amen. Live, look to the Lord for the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Allow him to go before you. And all we do, do all in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. For several years, the Lord gave me a vision to believe him for all our ministries to be under one roof. For ten and a half years, if the worship team would come, please. For ten and a half years, I prayed for all our ministries to be under one umbrella. As we were sharing facilities with other people and, and, you know, having ministries in several different locations. This past late July, beginning of August, our presbyter said to me, he said, I may have a place for you. And I know if you have come and served in the inner city of Savannah, you know this has been a prayer request of our heart for a long time. And as you know, we were still praying, believing God, he told me about a church that was merging and there was a district council church that was available that we could minister. And I said, well, let me pray about it. I began to pray about it and talk to others. And every individual said, go. This is the place. Go, this is the place. Go, this is the place. I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but you know what? Through that, every ministry that we had prayed and said, Lord, allow it to be under one umbrella is under that umbrella. God provided it. God made a way. And we're still able to minister in the inner city and east side, west side, and looking to uh, where we are on the south side to be able to minister to the needs of our community. Only God can do that. So maybe you're here this morning while well, the worship team begins to play. And you say, you know what? I need to be moved with compassion once again. I want the Holy Spirit to move in my heart and my life. Maybe you speak in your heart and your life and desire for you to tarry and to spend some time in prayer seeking his face. Maybe you're unsure about your calling and where God would have you. Be sensitive to what he'd have. Let's spend some time seeking the face of God. If you want to come to these altars, I want to encourage you to come pray and seek the face of God. If you want to pray in your seats, feel free to pray in, in your seats.
want us to stay in an attitude of prayer. And I want to pray for you. Because I believe God is speaking to hearts and lives. Whether right there in your seats, right around the altars, wherever that you're making your altar of prayer, I believe that you're speaking to hearts and lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you and I praise you for your divine presence in this place. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in hearts and lives of the students, Lord, the faculty and staff and administration. Lord, I speak blessings over University of Valley Forge. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would continue to anoint them, Lord, that you would continue to Lord, cause them to be set apart for you, O oh God. Lord, I pray, O oh God, Lord, that if there are those that have lost their focus, Lord, that they've lost their vision, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you would stir up the gifts within them even now. In the name of Jesus. Father, that you would stir up the gifts and the callings that you've placed in their hearts and their lives. Lord, if there are those, Lord God, that are weighing the balances and saying, God, I want to hear from you. Lord, I pray that you would speak clearly into their hearts and their lives. Lord, that you would show them exactly the direction of the plan that you have for their heart and their life. Lord, I pray, oh God, if there are those that are tired and weary, Lord God, maybe discouraged, maybe disappointed, Lord, maybe hurt. God, I pray that you would move them with compassion once again. Lord, that you would stir in their hearts and their lives, that you minister to them. Lord, that you would heal their hearts. Lord, that you would mend the broken hearts. And Lord, that you would just work and move through us, in us and through us. I pray as they go into their classes, Lord, that they would be moved with compassion. God, as they're in the workplaces, let them be moved with compassion. As they walk around this campus and as they spend time in their dormitories or wherever they may be, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, move hearts with compassion. Stir hearts and lives. In the name of Jesus, do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus, speak to hearts and lives. Do what only you can do. Father, I thank you for the faculty and staff and administration. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would continue, Lord God, to anoint them, continue to use them. Lord God, as they are helping to prepare these students and speaking into their hearts and their lives. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would bless them. I pray, Lord God, that you would speak to them. Lord, I pray that you would use them in a powerful way. Do what only you can. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
speaking to us. I want to make sure we don't miss what we heard this morning. Jesus is moved by compassion. Did you hear that? Did you catch it? it it's not that just we have to stir compassion. Jesus is moved by compassion for you. Did you know that? The heart of his his ministry is compassion when he looks at lost people. His heart breaks. His heart breaks. Do we have a sense of deep compassion? Jesus, would you give it to us? Would you give it to us, Lord? you give it to us, Lord? Let us have your compassion. Let us be filled with the heart of Jesus. We be people who give up our lives because of compassion and love for the lost, the heart of Christ. Let it be so. Let it be so. Jesus is doing something. I think he's changing us. He's transforming us. Let's continue and stay in the presence of Jesus. I know we're experiencing the move of God and his presence right now. Um, we also will continue to steward our roles here as students at the same time. So I'm gonna remind us we're going to have more opportunities to continue. We're going to linger here still. Um, we're going to have more opportunities to continue in prayer. This evening, we're going to have a time of prayer and worship. Um, and tomorrow, I know we normally have small group chapel on Thursdays. We're actually going to, instead of going to small group, spend some time in chapel again, just in prayer and worship. Is that okay with you guys? if we were placed as a community, just spend time praying and seeking God, that we would be moved by compassion with the heart of Christ. That he would give us his heart for the lost. Um, can we continue? Can we sing Break My Heart for What Breaks Yours? Just ask Jesus, can we press into him? Jesus, give us hearts of compassion. That we would be moved by compassion and compelled just the way that you were for us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's continue praying. I, if you have to go to class, I encourage you to continue stewarding your job as a student. You can go. Make sure that you're being communicative about jobs and things. But if you want to spend time, if the presence of God is doing something, if he's moving in your life, please stay. Spend time and seek the heart of Jesus. Let's sing together.
界。